subscribe. You're watching Radio Free Cybertron. Hosted by Brian Kilby with J.D. Church, John DeLuna, XV, Amy Morgan, and Rob Clay. For the latest Transformer news, reviews, and more, visit tformers.com. This is Radio Free Cybertron, episode 322. We recorded this on July 31st, 2013. I might as well just say it. XV is not here to give me hell about that, but... You know, so I will. So JD will. Somebody will. This will probably post uh, next Tuesday. I, no, I'm expecting this to go up maybe maybe Friday or Saturday. Next week's show though will have to go up by Friday because Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of next week is Sharkticon 2013, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yay! And uh, three of the five of us will be there. Maybe yes. two. Maybe maybe two of the five. Um. <laughs> Uh, it's a work in progress for me, but I will try. Yes. Uh, that was Don Ferguson, Headmaster Don, who is probably the second most local to that convention of all of us. He's going to try to make it. I will be there. I'm Brian Kilby. I'm your host. Uh, Diecast will be there. Diecast, you're coming in from Philly or Pittsburgh? Yeah, right outside Philly. Philly. Yep. That's a long drive. Yeah, 10 hours. He'll be picking up uh, Rob Clay. Uh, Paladin will not be there and. JD. It's a bit outside my range at the moment. JD is going to be sitting at home watching Toku on his couch. Yay. Buck naked. Totally. Lots I'll have a webcam lead. going. Naked Toku on the couch. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's my, well, the, that's my the weekend. Cool, uh, the cool thing, Doc, is you'll be able to come down here and get some delicious southern cooking and you know, I, enjoy, Kim, enjoy some things. Kim bought a case of cheer wine today. I bet you bring could on the cheer wine. You bring some of that that cheese that y'all got up there, and uh, cheese we take, have cheese steaks. No. Well, yeah, but you have like that cream cheese as well. So oh yeah, Philly like cream of the, cheese. Yeah, bring some of the cream cheese down, and you can barter and trade it. Yeah, I hope you guys like barbecue. Well, well, J, uh, Brian, you got you got to aim to a bojangles at least at least one bojangles. Yeah, so we're gonna do bojangles. Uh, so the things we're gonna head up while we're here. Uh, Bojangles, we're going to hit up that uh, awesome. because Rob Clay has never been to Jack in the Box. We'll go to Jack in the Box. And even though nobody outside of you, Don, knows what this is, we're going to go to Cookout. Ah, yes, you've got to. You've got to. Got to go to Cookout. Cookout is awesome. What's Cookout? It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome because Apparently. You, can get, you can get double hush puppies. That by itself makes it awesome. You can get co a corn dog as a side. Um, for your combo. <laughs> what? What? Yes, it's awesome. You can get a corn dog as a that's like that sounds like Amanda's favorite place already. It's awesome, dude. I love it. Uh that and a watermelon shake. It'll be great. Okay. So uh, on the show it's this week we have uh, quite a bit of news. Quite a bit. Quite a bit of stuff. Plus um Rob Springer does his Q and A. I honestly have no idea if we have a comic news this week. Did anything come out this week? Didn't more than meets the eye come out? Oh, 19. 19, 19 yeah. So I'm assuming we'll have a review of that from Robin XV. They're not on the show this week because, um, well, Transformers Prime um, ended this past week. And uh, later on during the show, we'll have a discussion about that. By, by that, I mean that Paladin, Diecast, and Don will be talking about that. <laughs> JD and I didn't watch it yet. So, um, crap. I, I hope people don't ask about that during the convention. I probably should catch up on that before. Yeah, it's going to get mentioned. You got a week, right? Yeah. That's a week for, what, a season and a half? Boy, and that slash fiction scene between Bumblebee and Prime was just... Wait, when Prime opened up is... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you mentioned slash fiction in the Q&A. Uh, I've already watched Rob's Q&A segment this week. Slash fiction comes up. Awesome. Pretty great. I, I always try to be topical. <laughs> pretty, pretty great. So, circle, uh, circle, dot, dot. Now I've got my JD shot. <laughs> Hey, that's so awesome and juvenile and wonderful. <laughs> I'm circle. I, what is? It? I'm rubber and your glue and whatever bounces off me I'll sticks be, to you. I'm going to use that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, cool. Yeah, on the new on uh, this week we have. Um, so 
there's an article on tformers.com. I want everyone to go out there, if you haven't already, and read it. I'm going to link to it. Basically, the subject is the Transformers 30th anniversary isn't necessarily such a great deal after all because a lot of the to- a lot of the toys of the 30th of the 30 are duplicates or exclusives that nobody well, really wants specifically you're t- you're talking about the the terrific 30 or whatever it is that Hasbro is thrilling this. 30 wasn't it thrilling 30 yep. the, the this is the 30 figures that they're climbing or the stuff that you should get or need to get for the 30th anniversary now my take on it this is a load of crap. Okay? This is a marketing scheme. I, I, I really think, I mean, if you look at the list and look at some of the stuff that's coming out, I think there's maybe honestly about 10 figures that Hasbro planned to be, you know, cool figures to get. I would say that obviously Metroplex is on that list. I would say obviously the Masterpiece Soundwave is on that list. And there'll probably be some others, maybe things we haven't heard of or, you know, just some of the generation stuff that's coming out. But this 30 list is nonsense. Like, this is a marketing... Oh, it totally st- is. I'm not... I, right. So the whole get- 30 years thing is incidental. I mean, it's great they've la- we've lasted this long, but come on, I don't think Hasbro's going to put everything else they have on full stop just to give 30 completely unique figures to commemorate. It's yeah. bad marketing. If you're going to market these 30 figures, they need to be retail figures. They need to be the figures that the the you know the common Transformer fan has a chance to go get. The common Transformers collect. fan is a seven-year-old boy who doesn't care about conventions. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Paladin is absolutely correct. The, the, the toys are still marketed to kids. There's a few collector items on here. I we would have say to the accept that we are the exception, not the rule. And that's something that we've been arguing about for decades now, which makes me feel old to say. But it's true. It's true. I mean, we've yes. been saying this since, you know, 2000. Since 99, we've been saying this. We are not the primary target audience for these toys. You know, yes, I get it. This Soundwave, totally marketed to collectors. The Metroplex, eh, more than likely, yeah, that's kind of a collector item, even though it is safe for kids and whatever. But... To come back around to it, it's like this 30 list was not developed by the people that made the toys. This list was made by the marketing people. And all they did was pull stuff off of the the stuff that was already coming out this year and say this, this, and this. I guarantee you. I guarantee oh, I, you. I, oh, no I, I agree. more thought put into it than that. I was like, oh, we have 30 right. toys coming. Let's. How can we squeeze 30 into this somehow? Exactly. And make and and the exclusives are on there. Sure, why not? Because you, if there are collectors out there and they'll go out to get it because it's on the list, great suckers. Yeah. It's not. It has nothing to do with like making them available to everybody. But, but you I, don't put two of the same figures on the list that are exactly the same, just They're a not different exa- convention. Yeah, you do, because you want everyone to go to the different conventions. <sighs> Honestly, no offense, but an intern probably put that list together. I mean, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and, they, they weren't, and they weren't thinking about it. They were literally copying and pasting from other lists. But can I, can I argue to something else that's on the... I mean, if we're talking about this specific article, I, I want to debate a particular point, which is to say that this that the Thurling Shirt 30 should have been like, like generations or reissue type stuff. Come on. It's very I mean, fanboy. I, I it, agree. I mean, there is no way, no way that Hasbro can afford... To reissue, so I, I'm not even, I'm not even qualifying this. They're list probably going to lose money on some of the stuff they're already putting out. Exactly, and and to to say that they need to go, I mean, some of the stuff that's on this list for reissue, Godfire Convoy, come on, I mean, there, I can, you can get that for like fifty bucks. I mean, the, no, there are, but, stuff, but yeah, I mean, no, but I mean, you know, what I mean, it's just like. No, but and there are but, other but they, but figures that, they could have used, like like um, uh, Springer that came out. I mean, that's a perfect figure to use for this, you know, one of thirty thrilling thirty, and it that didn't even make the list. Springer and I Sandstorm mean, are both fantastic figures. Exactly. Well, we haven't. Have we seen the whole list? Do we have the whole list on here? Or? Not we have the first eleven. 
Yeah. So I don't I don't know. I mean, if there's stuff that hasn't come out yet, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of the stuff on here that's probably going to be the generation stuff that we've seen, or it's going to be other stuff. But but, 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 again, but as, far, as far as reissuing stuff though, like the fans today need like these great figures. Like you who, know, we, we need we need like they need like Godfire Convoy, such a great figure. Who the they hell need, wants they, the they, X? Need, they need they need like they need like Sideburn, it's such an amazing. It's like the best figure ever. We who need, needs an X Nine Ravage? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. By the way, you know I'm tired. Of, I'm I'm glad we don't have ca- robots with cars hanging off their butts. We right. I mean we do occasionally, but we don't right. have a whole line of them. Yeah. X Nine Ravage was on the list. No, it's on this. It's on this. It you know, on their list. On their, 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 their wish I list. Yeah, the wish list. You know, X Nine Ravage is pretty sweet. No, it's not. I don't know for for a mod of Cheetor. Cheetor is a great toy. One. Well, it's a decent it's not toy, but it's a sign figure. I mean, I had that Tigatron one. And no, Tigatron's I, I, not as good. X9 Ravage. It's the same figure. The, the, the black looks really nice. Uh, no, the the plastic quality on it, it just, it, it the, the this sheen would be, and everything. This would be a reissue. Yeah, it'd probably be crap. Okay, then. Thank you. But, you know, uh, Takara, Takara did a really nice job putting that toy together. That specific toy. It's okay. It's not great as a transformer. I don't. I. I I'm still super partial to uh, Transmetal Cheetor. I'm sorry. It's not. But no, I'm saying the X9 Ravage is not great as a transformer because of the way they had to redesign the head on it. Yeah, I would agree. End up with arms hanging off of the bottom. Darn and... it, JD, you're making too much sense. <sighs> Thank you. It's well, not. The overall point is we shouldn't care about the whole numbering scheme because awesome stuff is going to come out either way. Yeah, you're gonna get great stuff. There's all kinds of cool things coming out. Screw this number list. Well, so okay, so I, no, I I do like one point though. Uh, awesome stuff will come out, but this number thirty was thrown out to artificially inflate like what our expectations are. Yeah. If we don't get thirty things that you know are legitimately like a neat idea, if they're mo- if a lot of them are retreads, and honestly, any reissue would be disappointing. I yeah. like I like reissues, but I don't want reissues as part of the main line or something. And it's already got Predaking on here. Predaking's already on the list. Predaking, the Bruticus, and Grimlock. Sure, they're they're like very recent toys, but that's a you know. Um, no, I mean the reissue G one Predaking. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, well nice that, and all, well, and I want it, but I just I don't consider. But it's it on like, that thirty list, and that's what I'm saying. I don't like, consider it like super highly prestigious. But I also say that that's, you know, an exclusive figure. People, the collectors, then, are going to buy that, whether it's got a freaking number on it or not. The collectors are going to buy figure. it. Anyway. So this, third, this list of 30 means nothing. Hasbro yes. totally blew yes. it. Yes, it does. It absolutely You are absolutely right, Diecast. It means nothing. <laughs> Just stop there. You really don't need to go beyond that. So what do you so think about Generations World? Nothing. Oh, it's like, amazing. I love it. Brian, Brian, can, I say, can I say one thing? No, no. Go yes. ahead, Don. Thank it has you. to be about world, though. Well, it's. I was on the on the previous topic. Um, oh. I'm borrowing. I'm borrowing the paraphrasing from Movie Bob over at the Escapist, but he brought up a good thing that as fanboys, we now have more power in recent years than we've ever had in our lives. For those of us that have been collecting for some time. And how we use that power shows how we are as a fandom. And I think everybody needs to remember, like what Paladin said, Hasbro is to make toys for kids. We are, they listen to us now more than ever, and they like to make these toys like Metroplex and other things for the older collectors who, who can appreciate the nostalgia and the new engineering. I, I, but, agree, I agree with that mostly, but I do have but, Go ahead. But we, uh, as a fandom, we have to remember how we interact with our the, our companies dictates how they interact with us. If we get snotty and we get snotty about stuff, they're going to say, okay, they're ungrateful for this kind of stuff. Let's not do this because it costs too much for them. Let's just all be adults, take the number system with a grain of salt, and, and as y'all said, enjoy the stuff that comes out. But we that, need to use our we need yeah. to use our power wisely. I, I don't I don't I don't completely agree with that, Don. And it's not you. It's it's the quote or whatever. But uh, so here's the thing: companies are not going to lose money because of fanboys. 
Okay, they're in it. They're, they're pro- you know what a company's primary goal is to make money, like Metroplex. And Metroplex is yeah. great and all, but he was also f- prominently featured in like a very popular, successful video game. Yes, so, and and they have set that figure up to make money. So, like when we're talking about you know having a lot of power now, that's true. But you know, like something that Hasbro would release just for the hell of it, like I don't know, Big Daddy. Right, like six years ago. Of course, it was a repaint. It's a repaint, not a not a big deal. Yes. But it was just like asking to be, you know, to be clearanced out. Mm-hmm. But they did it because, like, five people, which I can. But it, but it didn't cost of. them that much to do it. No, but it still cost them, and there wasn't necessarily a lot of. There wasn't necessarily a huge ROI they were expecting on it. They're expecting yeah. a lot of money back on Metroplex and all these. Things. And they're probably going to get it from the looks. Of oh, absolutely. Yeah, and we're talking about, you know, things, yeah. fanboy things like uh Rhinox coming out, but you know what, who has the, you know, all these millennials and people who were like young when sure. Beast Wars came out, they're, they're where we were five years ago. Yeah. This so, is a, this is the thing for them. So, and that's what, so that's where I come back around to. Like, I, I don't think we need to get an overinflated sense of, superiority like we have some sort of power and so we need to act we need to act like with we need transformers to play nice with hasbro maybe mattel or people who like co- people who yeah. collect that crap hey, yeah but let's go ahead let's go ahead let's just yeah, go ahead, okay. let's go ahead and go to world because world is awesome okay i'm sorry let's talk about world world is i have world up on screen now it's i've had it up actually since i've tried to transition this topic over well, I have to admit, I didn't like the first pictures of him that came out, but the official look at him is a lot better than I first I thought. I love it. Amazing. It, it, tar- it, that is one figure that simply by changing how it was standing went from a figure that I was like, oh, to a figure that I was like, yes. I don't think I can like this any better than I do. Yeah. Now we just have to hope it can transform decently and hold poses decently. I even like the silly Gerwalk mode. Sure. Is it Gur? Gur. I've always well, said Gur. Gur. Yeah. Gur. I just freaking love this toy. I cannot Sorry. wait to have this. I'm excited. I'm I thrilled. Don't, they don't have release dates for any G1. of the upcoming generations like World, do they? What was that, Paladin? They don't have release dates for him or any of the other upcoming generations, do they? <sighs> I don't think so. These kind of just lately have just seemed to pop up whenever. Yeah. I remember most of the cards at BotCon said like January, which means we're pulling a date out of our ass and hopefully it's out by then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they, just, they just need to be careful with that ger- with the gear walk mode because it's a thing that flies and it has a gear walk mode, so how many gold may sue them again? Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. That can happen. It's a, it's a flying thing with legs. We can sue them. So Animated Plastic is asking if we think a Roadbuster will be made. I wish... But no. Yeah, no, because Roadbuster is not Whirl. <laughs> well, there is a no, there is a. I did see over the weekend from the TFCon uh, report, there is another third party Roadbuster in the works. And we have that I officially licensed. That is project, not, and that's okay. We had that. We had that officially licensed one that's coming out in Japan. The but that's not transforming. Uh, did Roadbuster not transform? No, I mean, I'm sure the, no. the uh, SD one. Yeah. That one transforms. Yes, but not the but regular size one. Yeah. Hey, which it's makes sense. Thing. <laughs> Actually, let's go ahead and I'm going to skip around. Um, so I do want to mention. Oh, sure. Don't stay in order or anything. Yeah. Oh. Actually, no, I'm not skipping around. It is the next item. The Wonderfest uh, 2013 Transformers product news and images. Uh, what did you guys think of that gigantic? Organic uh, Titan class, but non-transforming um, Scorponok. It's a big Scorponok thing. Everyone go nuts over it until we figured out it couldn't transform or do I, anything. I want it. I don't care. It's a gigantic freaking Scorponok. Yeah. I, I Besides, like... Scorponok doesn't really transform anyway. He just kind of lays, lays down. down. Yes. Thank you. He lays down is basically it. And you point. Yeah. So uh, I think it looks great. Let me um, see if I can get a good. So what's that? What's that prime going on? Is that um, so? It is the Action Toys Ultimate Optimus Prime. So I looked at that and I thought that was the uh, I thought that was MP10, but I think it, it's a bit bigger than that. 
Yeah, I I really thought it was MP10 too, and it. I... I mean, it's um, it looks nice, but I can't honestly. I guess the head looks different. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not good with things. Well, I, I think I think this one is the the uni metal one that has the it has electronics and lights in it. I believe. But it's uh. Hmm. Was that a different prime? Because they did have a few optimists out there. Yeah, it's light and sound. I don't know it. This looks like and the probably this way looks overpriced. Like the one. Yeah, there's a little rude buster. But a different head. Yeah. Yeah, the head is definitely different. Let's see. Here's a description. Oh, yeah, it says Ultimetal Optimus Prime. But I can't read it. And then it <laughs> says Japanese. You can't read Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. The gun has a Gatlin in it. That's amazing. That is pretty sweet, isn't it? Um, I want it. It, lo- it looks like it should transform. It, it does. It does look like it should transform. It is a transform. It, like it I said, it doesn't. I don't know. Is it the... Yeah, because it's got the vents. <sighs> I can't tell. I have both of those figures. I have both the original and the current one and... Maybe it's something new. Maybe it is a new one because look at if you look at the pe- breakout picture. Boy, we sound stupid, don't we? Yeah. Um, the breakout picture shows parts taken off, and it looks like the figure will do that. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I, I'm now again. I did this. I remember seeing that some of these Union Metal Company figures will be like the will be like the Solo Chigokin Mazinger that has removable armor, so you could have a skeletal design. I, on I, one yeah, half. I've seen, I've seen yeah. that. And that's what this looks like it has. So, so again, way overpriced. Which means it's non-transforming then? Hey, it would have to be, yeah. I'm going to go with that, yeah, until we're proven otherwise. Yeah. It's a really great Action Master Optimus Prime. It's a statue. It's a statue, basically. It's, very, it's, a, it's so, a figure statue. Yeah, so, like, I never got it. Chad is suggesting doesn't transform. I, yeah. It's a statue. Uh, yes, it's a statue figure. I never got into the statues. But I'm all about like action mastery toys as long as they're big and poseable and nice. Yeah, yeah that looks freaking awesome. Yeah, I'll keep my MP10. Oh, <laughs> MP10 is great. Oh, yeah. And the best the best guy in the world picked that up for me. But uh, you know, I just no. uh, <laughs> well, I know that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, it was dumb. Actually, I was rooting for you to lose money on it. So yeah. <laughs> I would have been so pissed off if I. It would have been up. amazing. I would have recorded because, it. I would have screamed. Because J because JD is dicks. Yes. Yeah. Here's Scorponok. I uh, I really want I really want this. I mean I I don't care that it doesn't transform. I do, but I just can't see making a figure that it's like like JD said. It doesn't really Scorponok does not G one Scorponok does not transform, other than just laying down in a few in a few parts folding. I can't see making one this big. As simple as the base transformation is, and it not transforming, it just seems like a waste. It's real simple. You just lay it down, Don. <laughs> it is transforming. You just lay it down. <laughs> oh, so he is transformed. Okay. There you go. I, was, right thinking, I was thinking the same thing, Don. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. But, but, but I'm just saying, they're they're at the knees. Just put in the two hinges have the feet fold a certain way and have a waist swivel. I mean, the tra- to add a transformation ability shouldn't be that difficult considering meanwhile, what the transformation is. Meanwhile, Transformer um, like engineers are out there like, oh yeah, because it's so easy to yeah. do that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, just stating, I'm just stating from a comparing to what the G1 does to what this one looks like. Well, There's but not, not, you know, I'm just saying. You know, what, you know like, how people are, man. You give a mouse a cookie, and they want a glass of milk. You do that, then they're gonna be like, "I want to do the base mode." Or, oh, it doesn't have the ladders. Then it's just like, oh, just make a statue. It's not a statue. It's a big transforming. Yeah. It's a big non-transforming no, it's a, action it's figure. A, it's an action figure, but I'm just well, saying. It, you know, it's, it's just like, as interesting as the original Scorponok. <laughs> oh, it looks a lot better than the original. It's Scorponok. actually better than the original. <laughs> actually, the drawing on the uh, I don't the, know if what? that's the instruction sheet or whatever it is. That that Scorponok looks awesome. There, that there it is. Yellow the infinite bag is holding plastic. Just... I know. There it is. It's right there. Yeah, I I sold mine to. Uh, 
Who did I sell? Oh, Disbro. I sold mine to Disbro. Well, then. You know, one reason it may not transform, if you look at it, it's the um, proportions are not at all like that. Maybe it would just look like total crap if it had transformed. It would. Like the last Scorponok that we, well, maybe not the last, but the, what, Energon Scorponok that we got, which I love that toy, but it, it's still kind of boxy. It's not very good. I like it, sort of. I don't, the tail is a little much, but, um... I don't know. Maybe it just wouldn't work. So, um, what what I think really does work though is the Master Shooter collectibles, um, not Rev and not High Q figures, uh, especially that High Q. Um, like looking at this thing, I didn't, it didn't even occur to me that it's a Target Master. I look at it and it's, yeah, it's like flipping High Q. Really... I want these. So these are going to be at Sharkticon next week, right? Yeah, probably a hundred dollars. <laughs> no, these should be like what? I I, I don't want to wager how much they're going to be, but I I don't want to know. I I don't. They're not going to be a hundred bucks. Fifty bucks for both. Twenty five a piece sounds about right. I think they're sold as a set because they did mention that they had thirty five sets. Well, I'm saying fifty dollars for the set. Oh, uh, maybe yeah. as a convention. Yeah, they look too little and boring. Maybe as a convention exclusive. Have you ever seen mm. the Target Masters before and Power Masters? The, they're pretty little and boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the most part. There's not a lot of character to them, but I really love the look of that high Q. Yeah. Well, I, well, I like both of them because, I mean, it, it'd be really nice to get some of these Target Masters to make my generation figures, but for what they tend to go for, it's just a little too much for what they are. I don't know. If IQ doesn't have the human face and he's not screaming with the wildman face, it's just not the same. Yeah. I, I wish they would I wish third party guys would actually make like power masters, you know, and headmasters, even though you couldn't do a thing with them. You know, <laughs> even because it, go in anything. Because they don't wouldn't go in anything. I still I I still just wish for authenticity sake that well, they would do actually, it. Actually, uh Brian, Master Shooter did do some headmasters. It's uh But I'm certain they probably went with G one headmasters, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a, it's like a little Optimus Prime that becomes an Optimus Prime headmaster. Oh, I saw that. I did see that. So so if you say so I say like if they don't if fans project does not make that alligator con from the uh, skull cruncher design as Optimus Prime from uh, City of Steel. If you if you bought that headmaster, you could paint us a, a junk skull cruncher blue and red and have your own alligator con. I love City of Steel so much. <laughs> it's the best worst episode of anything ever. I thought that was the girl that loved Power Glide. No, screw that. Oh no, that's a great episode. Screw though. that. Screw Carnage. Screw Carnage and C Minor. It's true. It's, it's, Carnage and C Minor is awful. It's just bad. Yeah. Bad. Although, since you did bring up season three, I do like this exosuit figure they showed off. Yes. Yeah. Uh, going back to that, um, that is really nice. So, that was an awesome segue, pal. That was an awesome segue. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can't find it now, but yeah, it's. Um, I can't wait to see that like it? painted. And, uh, Although the saw, transformation doesn't. Does it come with both Spike and Daniel? I saw Spike and Daniel, yeah. It I, doesn't I just, look like this one transforms either. I just it assumed that they were resin. It does transform, it just doesn't transform. Well, it's not, like the, it's not like the transformation suit does much of anything. I don't know, like, yeah. as a kid, you know, I, I guess it's to the success of... You know, Transformers the movie in season three, you know, using Daniel as a point of view character. But I wanted one of those exosuits so bad. Change the colors and smooth out some details. You have a perfect recreation of the Apex armor. Mm. Yeah. I can get behind that. You just want a Miko in it. Well, it'd be cool. I, 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 can, I can have a set of prime records. Somebody could sell that. Yeah, I think so. Sorry, I'm looking at it this way. I've got two. I've got four monitors on my desk now. It's just a little, a little hard to manage. Yes, no, I don't need them. Uh so the, my one problem with the exosuit, it's a little big. I've got it up now. Yeah, scale is kind of right out the window. Yeah, so. 
compare it to Masterpiece Hot Jiminy Hot Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Holy shnikes, that's huge. Yeah. Scale what scale? <laughs> oh my God. That's ridiculously yeah, huge. Well, look at how big the the you know the figure is compared well, look at how to how big the humans are compared to it. And yeah, I'm, not the suit. The, can, yeah, the human. I'm yeah. fine. I'm fine with that scale for the humans. Can someone? Can, what? They're not Gundams. They're, you know. I mean, it, they're a little. I mean, big. I guess it's masterpiece scale ish. It's oh, it's bigger, bigger than, than masterpiece, masterpiece scale. <laughs> so, so think about like. Um, Masterpiece scale. So think about uh, Doctor. Uh, what's his name? Uh, from... Blue. No, 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 no. Doctor. Um... <laughs> was Alcaz? Was it wasn't Alcazar? Was it? Uh, um, Archivel. Archivel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Doctor Archivel. Uh, I am. I the one who remembered that. And how small he is compared to Starscream, the Masterpiece Starscream. He's like the size of your pinky. That's you know pretty much pre masterpiece size um what a masterpiece scale human would be this is like this is like uh jet jaguar size or something if god what that is this is redonkulous godzilla Me- versus megalon no i'm still just like amazed at the size of this suit thing it's ridiculous but i i kind of want it no especially if it comes with like um Season three, uh, Spike in uh, that Daniel figure. Daniel, you're because just because they're ridiculous outfits. Yeah, totally. We totally dressed like that. Fashion be like. We totally dressed like that in two thousand five. Well, yeah, that's the past. So that's like you know that's like out of style now. God, how terrifying is that? The two thousand five was almost ten years ago. Oh, what's that? Is that? that was <laughs> Those outfits were probably members only back for. Uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Oh. So anybody pick up uh, Construct Bots? Those are those are hit retail. Pass. I know. Uh, XV picked up. I think one or two. Are we covering any of the third party stuff from TFCon? No. We can. What do you want to bring up? Well, there's just one that I think Merritt's mentioning, and that is Quantron. Quantron. Is this what you put in the chat? Yes, right. which is Make Toys Not Computron Project. Oh, we got photos of that? Yes. Holy crap, yeah. yes, absolutely. I need pictures. They're in the, the, you know, shout thingy, text window. Oh, there we go. Did you oh, say wow. I thought you said shout factory. <laughs> Never mind. Whoa. I don't... Whoa. I, I oh! It doesn't scream Computron to me. It doesn't. I it looks know. pretty good to me. Maybe I, maybe I need to see it in color or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, think so. I mean, the head is definitely, but that chest armor thing, is, yeah, is, is a little off. I think when you get the color on it, it'll look better because yeah. I can see what they're going for. Someone photoshopped that with color. I don't like the extra spikes on nose cone. No? No. I give Make Toys credit, too. At least if they're going to show us a preview of something, they're showing all five figures and the combined mode. This is what you need to do if you're a third party. Show us this from the beginning. If you want to leave the color off, that's fine. But show us what the toy's going to look like, you know, in gray, combined. Now, Diecast, it's interesting you mention that because I was going to bring this up. The next time we had a big third party thing. But have y'all noticed that a lot of the third party companies are doing just that? We're seeing most, if not all, of the characters in a line in, in, in the gray prototypes before they, even the first one comes out. I think they're doing that so that they don't have people buying one or two figures and then not liking them and then dropping the entire line. That way they're not losing sales. Wouldn't they be making? Wouldn't they be making sales though? Wouldn't it? I mean, if, yeah. if people are buying them and not, you know, at least they're buying the two or three they they got. 
instead of like it, not buying but, them. Well, it just seems like several of the companies are now doing that very thing. I'm, I'm wondering. I'm just wondering if there's some kind of in- industry thought that if we show everything up front, people will know what to expect, and the sales won't be up and down across the length of us of a group. If yeah, I would have saw TFC Toys not Superion combined in gray before I started buying the figures, I would have passed. And if they told me there would be another upgrade kit in order for it to look, you know, like it should, right. I would have passed. And Make Toys has their shit together because Quantron will be going up for orders starting in November. Yeah. Hmm. Which is right, pretty well, soon, so I got to start saving. Right, 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 right when the masterpieces are starting to come out for uh, Smoke Screen and uh, Blue Streak. Yeah. I will admit, I think there's one other third party project worth mentioning because of its uniqueness. There's a group called Keith's Fantasy Club, I believe is the title, and they're making a third party, not Skybite. What? Oh, yeah. Skybite? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Wow. Um, is especially memorable because they already have a repaint picked out for him, and I believe Don knows what this one is. Yeah, uh, Captain Shark from the Brave Le- Brave of Legend Gold Duran series right. that ran from '94 to '95. So let me put that. This up. is probably the first ever third party Brave figure. You think so? Yeah, it's uh, possible. Uh, yes. it's very it's very possible, and it's it's a very it's very spot on to the original Brave toy because I have the, the I have the original Brave toy and it fires thirty six missiles. Holy crap! Uh, yeah, go ahead. Because the Gatling gun on this figure doesn't have the missile launcher, but on I, on on the Brave version, it, it shoots thirty missiles, thirty short missiles out of the little like the old Dreadwing launcher on Dreadwing G two. Uh huh. So, but that is an extremely accurate. So, uh, figure. so KFC is doing um, Skybite. That's pretty great. Uh, so uh, also uh, apparently at TFCon, I think uh, Scaleface had shown this uh, earlier in the show or before the show. Uh, Streetwise, um, there's something about it that I like. It's a. I think it's the design aesthetic. It's not the standard, you know, sleek and smooth and cool um, reinterpretation of the G1, you know, vehicle. Like uh, a lot of the other things, it's it's kind of boxy and um, it's not rough. It's it's, but it's not sleek. It's um, I really like the look of it, and I definitely want to not Computron. Yes. Not pardon me, not Defensor. Yeah. I want to I want to not Defensor more than not Computron. So that Streetwise is from TAFC, so that'll be their project after the not Predacons. They're not Predacons, I assume. So are they the so, good? Are they the really good not Predacons or the really meh not Predacons? Well, their first one hasn't even come out yet. I think. Oh, so they're the ones that we haven't seen yet. The third one. Is it third or fourth? Yeah. Third. Uh, I'm gonna go with third. Yeah, it's probably safe fourth about. if you count Hasbro. Yeah, I don't. That's that's a real one. That's not that's not a not Predacon. That's like actually really pred- uh, Predacon. That's actually really yeah the Predacons. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Anything else? A couple other things. Uh, Metroplex. If you've pre-ordered Metroplex from BBTS, um, it hit today. So so just well, never mind. I'm not gonna share that. A day thing. early. Yeah, a day early. Uh, we got oh oh um we we talked about this before, but I, I guess I just want to mention it again because. I'm still just sort of shocked that that the fact that we're getting um, Armada Starscream. Yes, that is kind of awesome. Yeah, I didn't even honestly think there was a need to redo Armada already, but I mean, it looks good. Armada was ten years ago. Yeah, it was ten years ago, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of sad. Or was Armada eleven years ago? Um. I want to say Armada was hitting 2002. Yeah, around 2002, so yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was hitting, yep, totally, so that's the thing. It's really nice looking, and speaking of nice looking, so is Scoop. Yeah, yeah. Scoop is kind of random, but he still looks good. It's, all, it's another thing that's awesome. 
Yeah, yeah we, that's deluxe too, right? Yeah, we're getting a lot of great look. Oh my god, I love the vehicle mode. Hey Brian, you were you were asking for the for the Quantron in color. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I believe scale. Who was it? Yeah, scale face did a there's a there's a digi bash. Uh, oh, I saw that. I thought that was the abominous digi bash. No, that's where is Quantron it? Digi bash. I need a, it I need the link. Looks very nice. I need. Uh, it looks for... better in color. Yeah. Link and I still keep hoping some someone will do these. I I don't want to buy them twice over. But that is shatter that and the shattered glass abominus and then reverse it for Computron. Yeah, will look kind of will look kind of awesome. So here is uh, Sky Warp, um, very nice looking. Can't wait to get that. So let's look th- let's look at the Digi Bash, uh, not Tron. We'll say, uh, yeah, I totally What's see wrong that. Wrong with Tron. I see that now a it's little bit. Thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, that does. Um, I told you. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind. I. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. You want it. It's it. It looks really good. Now, the kibble on the back worries me. I'm. That looks like that's going to be scatter shots. This cannon. That's not kibble. That's cannon. his main weapon. It's just really freaking huge. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. that can. Maybe that can be lowered a little bit. I don't know. Damn it. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, okay. Nice. So based on Nate Toy's previous, that'll be two two packs of the limbs and probably just scatter shot by himself. Or they might just do a whole set like they did with Green Giant. Ho, ho, but didn't Green <laughs> Giant come out after they did the yellow colored um, individual not constructicons in Yeah. In that? Well, the but yellow- if they're already all in gray, all they got to do is paint them and start popping them out. Paint them what? Well, the the yellow was supposed to be the shorter run of the two uh, before they moved on to the green ones for the, uh, the Make Toys Giants. So, you know, they may do the same thing here. They may do a uh, a different version of the uh, Quantron early and then change the paint job for something later on. I don't know. What do you want? If oh, they Massey. do that, I'll wait for the Quantron. second one. We've established this. Yeah. No, Massey. It's Don's cat. Massey. Yeah, Massey. Yeah, Massey. Not hey. Quantron, Massey. Massey. No, he was saying uh, Massey wants Quantron. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Marcus, Marcus show, then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ah. Uh, how much is that not cone head set from iGear? Like three thousand dollars? Like four hundred and sixty dollars, I are, think. Are those the are God. those their masterpiece scale figures? I, yes. Yeah. Uh, why why would anybody that want that? Helps a little, but which uh. version of the masterpiece mold did they rip off for the cone heads? Why would anybody want that? It, well, now, here's, here's the thing. It's like it's like four hundred and sixty dollars, and they're actually saying, you know, they're giving this sixty days for people to pre-order it, and it, and if enough people don't pre-order it, they're not making them. Well, now they did. They've done these already. So they're matter, Maddie Collector and Castle Grayskull with uh, cone heads. Yes. Except well, it's it, not. If it, oh God. I'm not dropping five hundred dollars on these though. There's just oh, no God, way. No. God no. Yeah no. But I mean, they've already done all seven seekers with their slightly revamped because they're the ones who who first went in and changed the masterpiece mold to not have the big side panels off the side and worked that kibble into the lakes. And they've and they've done all all seven counting sunstorm. So they've already got the molds, unless these are a completely new mold. It's not worth the money. I don't know why. No, absolutely not. Not even close. I can't. I can't. I don't even know why anybody would want this. I mean, that's why they're Maddie collecting it. There's probably not sixty people who want these. Right. I really hope nobody pays for this. Yeah. It's Sometimes not I like make to believe it. people aren't that dumb. Uh, Jose Canseco bat. And I tell me I didn't for pay money time. for this. Sorry. Okay. Hey. Um. I think that's pretty much it for the news. Uh, mm-hmm. Except for spoiler. Slipstream is hitting your mailbox soon if you are a member of the... Oh, is it Slipstream? Club? Yeah. Yep. Oh, Slipstream is the second one. I should have got that today. Why didn't I get it today? You're not as cool as me. Oh, maybe it's out there. I should go check. You should go check. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to comic news, which is, should be a <laughs> review, I hope. 
they have just because I have to mail that to somebody. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, we have well, that a review. Be another three weeks again. A review of Generations uh, Transformers uh, more than meets the eye. Number nineteen. Uh, after that, we have Q and A with Rob Springer. Then we'll, we will be back uh, for a quick review of uh, the last episode of Transformers Prime. We will be back right after this. Warning. The following segment may contain spoilers for the most recent Transformers comic books. Okay, this week uh, we'll be talking about more than meets the eye 19, because the interminable month-long wait since issue 18 is finally over with. Yes. And in the meantime, Amy's got reviews of Monstrosity for us. It's been a while since I've had a chance to review issues of Monstrosity, and we are now just getting... It's about ready to finish up. Uh, I just got issue 11 just this last week. So, in that vein, the last review I gave Monstrosity, Monstrosity um, was issue number five, where there was this gaping hole in Cybertron's crust from the refinery explosion. Um, was, and it was also being explored by Ratchet, Wheeljack, Perceptor, and Jetfire. And Ratchet had just gotten to the end where he says, I have a bad feeling about this, the cliche line. So I'm going to go ahead and review issues six through nine. Um, most of issue six is about their spelunking into the inner layers of their planet, um, where they find two important things, a lake of unrefined energon that can, you know, save their energy crisis, sort of, because there's sort of a hitch to using it, and a bunch of creatures that have more in common with uh, kaiju than transformers. In fact, there's one guarding that Energon Lake. Um, issue 7, we focus mostly on uh, Megatron, as Hunger vowed to kill him, and he definitely tries, so he shows up and, and tries that. Um, but it's Megatron, and he's resourceful, and... You know, although he's you know got several Terracons to fight and he's vastly outnumbered, well, not vastly outnumbered, but he is outnumbered. Um, he makes that fight pretty entertaining, especially since he kills another so that he may live. And you'll have to read it to find out who. <laughs> um, we also get the Autobots report to Prime about the Lake of Energon and the Kaiju gu gu uh, guarding it as I just watched Pacific Rim about a week ago, so Kaiju is on my mind. Um, and Cup also reigns in the Dinobots, and that's all of issue seven. Um, then we flip to issue number eight. Uh, we get stuck in the middle of a rock and a hard place um, as the mass exodus has begun. Diatlas resigns from the convocation, um, but as the citizens of the planet line up to leave, uh, only those who can pay for transport are loading on the ships, and this kind of really bothers the rest of them. They're, they're really upset. A couple of them have been there for quite a while, so a riot breaks out, and when the Autobots show up to keep the peace, which could potentially end up making things worse, Prime shows just why he's Prime and diffuses the situation, um, but Diatlas still decides to leave. Um, and Prime, he has to let them all go, so they leave. But it's not all farewell and amicable goodbyes, uh, because the Dinobots, as the Dinobots and Cup show up, the cons still have attack plans. Um, when they focus on the convoys off the planet, the bots try and get the smackdown on them. Um, but a huge explosion goes off, and when the dust settles, we have a very out-of-control Grimlock. And that pretty much wraps up issue number eight. Uh, into issue number nine, Grimlock goes psycho crazy on the cons and some bots, making them retreat after a thorough butt kicking. Um, and the only way Prime can get Grimmy to cool off and revert back to his robot form is to hold him fast as he gets a hold of himself. Meanwhile, Scorponok has ordered the retreating cons to the crater as he's found something he wants them to see. When they get there, Seekers are bombing the crater, and Scorpy says, Just you wait, it's about to get good. <laughs> uh, as he wakes up the kaiju, things are about to get trashed on a planetary level, and that's where I'm going to break for this review. 
Just a few little tidbits to highlight that these four issues go over with as well. We find out more about why the Dinobots are the Dinobots. Origin story to so to speak of. What went wrong with them? Um, why are you so dangerous, Grimlock? Uh, we see what happens when Prime gets smacked in the face. Um, there's some smackdown between Grimlock and Shockwave. And Prime also wins over the Dinobots with his determination. So it's kind of cool. Uh, so that's four issues, and it's packed full of story. In fact, I think that's one of the most impressive things about these issues, is that it's just the use of every second and nook and cranny of space to get all the details in that need, that to get the tell, the, the, just to get the story told. Um, and we are still able to get some character moments um, illustrating why Prime is different from the other Primes before him, as that's kind of the point that Diatlas brings up a few times. But more than that, when they first teased what the story was about, that it was going to be about Megatron and his descent into who he becomes, um, I figured Monstrosity was going to be about what he, you know, what he becomes, because that's what they said. Uh, but the more I've read this, and I find the details of what Metzen and Dilly are unraveling, the more I see this isn't just about Megatron and his monstrosity. This is about Cybertron as a whole, how each bit of those affected by the war have a sense of, of you know, the, a sense of monstrosity of their own to deal with. The Dinobots have their issues, prime and social situation, as well as trying to pull everything together, is a monstrosity of a job. Diatlas uh, continually telling him he's no better than the other monsters who ran the planet, and then the in the end of issue nine bringing up a real monster from the depths. Um, monstrosity isn't just one, it's not a one person's journey. It's, it's the explanation. It's, it's the amount of the story defined into one word. Um, I'm continually enjoying the art. I've heard both positives and negatives on this front uh, from many different fans. Um, so if you are a fan of, his, of, of this work, you'll continue to love what Livio Ramadelli is doing here. Um, if you aren't, you probably won't change your mind. Um, I think it comes down to personal tastes. Uh, for me, I think Livio plays to his strengths and he keeps me hooked with his use of color and tone with the textures and just, just everything that he's working with on that. It's just it's what I've really grown to love about Livio's work. Um, and in that term, it really creates, you know, how he does things. It, it does create a really good mood in the comic. And I don't think that, um, because it's a little bit more darker, dark and grittier, it, it has to be, I, I couldn't see anybody else doing it than Livio because he's just doing such a good job. So, um, I also have to say that the guided view in Comixology, the Comixology app that I use to download my digital issues, um, has really become a great way to keep the suspense on one panel to the next. Um, I usually don't see when I flip to another image um, what is being revealed on that page, and it really has added to the exper the viewing experience for me. Um, it, it's more than that, though. It's like there are times when the choice of what is shown next will focus on this small little part or little window of the whole panel, and then when you tap to continue, it reveals the whole rest of the panel, and then you're like, oh, oh my goodness. Um, if you get a chance to try out one of the, the digital options in the future, I highly recommend it. You gotta check out the guided view because it's just it, it's it's really added to my reading experience. So and for rating right now, um, we are getting so many great stories and comics that I've just started rating according to how I feel my level of enjoyment has been. These four issues back to back as a total. Um, I'd say I'm hitting about a probably a four because there's plenty of action, the dialogue is great, details move along, and it's pretty consistent in the pace. So there you have it. Um, my next review will probably wrap up the series. So that's Monstrosity. So, everything you thought you knew as of issue 17 is wrong. Mm -hmm. Spark splicing never happened. Ultra Magnus has been full of tinier men for millions of years. <laughs> And Star Saber, he's religious. Or something. Uh, well, they said he went on Holy Wars. Yeah. 
So I mean, that kind of says something about it. Yeah, I I, I was trying. To, I would. I guess that does make sense. I was trying to figure out when they said, you know, he was planning an atheist genocide. I was trying to figure out which side the atheists were going to be on in that. <laughs> so, uh, I believe I, he wants to genocide the atheists. Okay. I think what we can determine from this is Star Saber is the Westboro Baptist Church. Yes. So, I, I mean, there you go, right there. Yeah. I am kind of wondering, though, if this is the original Star Saber in much the same way, you know, that we Ultra Magnus is not the first Ultra Magnus. And see, other people are thinking that, too, and the problem I have with that is that it, it's too convenient a plot device to A, be reused at all, but B, be reused as soon as we find out the first time it was used. I don't know. It, it's It just, at the same time, it just seems completely illogical because, for one thing, I can't imagine someone who is updating their updating the law named after them in real time would want to give up that much control. Well, that's true, but it doesn't necessarily require, you know, little dude in a suit to be the next enforcer. Well, that's true. That's that's the part I'm having the problem with. I don't think that it should necessarily be itself a plot device that gets, you know, recycled frequently or very soon like this. Fair you enough. Know, let Star Saber just be Star Saber. Yeah. And not, you know, Star Saber the lineage. Yeah. Um, yeah, not everybody seems happy with uh, how Star Saber is being portrayed so differently from the Japanese fiction. I don't actually have a good grasp of the Japanese fiction, but, uh, you know, he just seemed kind of typical anime hero to me, so what are you going to do with that? I have no idea. Mm. I mean, I'm happy enough that they're doing something different. Yeah, I mean, when was the last time anybody in the U.S. used Star Saber for anything at all? Hmm. Um... Beats me. Yeah, I mean, closest we got was Wing Saber for Energon, which is not really counting in any way. Mildly derivative. Yes. Mildly. Yes. And then the other Wing Saber was what, Sonic Bomber? Mm Mm-hmm. So, even farther off. Um, Yes. Okay, so spark splicing never happened. They were Mm -hmm. tapping the Matrix. Yes. And I saw somebody point out something really interesting, which is that this is basically a parallel to G2's budding system. Yeah, now that you mention it. Um, Especially with Tyra's uh, theory that doing so separates the Matrix-spawned individuals from the will of Primus. Yeah. Because apparently Tyrus has found religion now, too. Yes, uh, apparently he uh, started cutting himself and eventually worked his way around to his brain case, and it was all down the hill from there. Oops. But, yeah, um, I, I'm hoping that some uh, someone, not that he'll listen, but I'm hoping someone will point out to Tyrus uh, next issue or the issue after that his entire, you know, generation did not was not spawned in this way and nova prime Giaxis, him <laughs> they're all loco and yeah. vicious and genocidal and you know and i'm assuming star saber is probably of the same vintage otherwise he would not want to employ him thus so hmm. you know they're all crazy well i mean there's certainly there certainly is a case to be made for that yeah and, you know, I'm, I'm sure the drilling into the brain thing probably wasn't helping his clear thinking all that much. No. Um, and, you know, whether or not his realization about all those convictions was accurate or not, or just something he believes after the fact. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's something that's going to have to either kind of be ambiguous or maybe explained in the course of this. Yeah. The way things have been going, it's hard to say what will actually get explained or not. And at yeah. that point, what we can actually believe. Well, yeah. I mean, an issue and a half is a pretty big turnaround for a plot point to be revealed and then 
pulled out to be a fake. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that we have Diatlas back, I have a feeling he may be providing a fair bit of exposition next issue. Could be helpful. And hopefully he is not the sanctimonious jerk that he is in Monstrosity, but that's another thing. Well, he could always wait till later to do that. Yeah. I mean, there, there's other things to take care of at the moment. Yes. Or Star Saver will kill him, whatever. Yeah. That just to me that just kind of seems like where it's going. Yeah. Um. So Ratchet and Farmer are having fun. Mm-hmm. Well, sort of. Yeah. So it's come down to a contest. Yes, Pharma has started his own reality show. Hmm. And, you know, I think Ratchet had a slightly different plan in mind. He was probably going to, you know, try to provoke Pharma into saving Tailgate. Yeah. But instead, Pharma had a different plan. Yes. Let's because cut again, some guys crazy. in half. Mm-hmm. Down the middle. Yes. You know, I think it's going to leave a mark. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. It's too bad, too. I kind of liked Ambulon. Yeah. Even if he was just a leg. <laughs> of course, now he can be two legs. Yes. So, I mean, you know, gotta look at the upsides. Oh, yeah. Um, what else? What else? Uh, it, it was a busy issue. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that happened. Yeah. It, ah, very dense. <laughs> you know, when they promised answers at the end of the issue last month, they delivered much more than I could have hoped for. Yeah. There was so much material packed into this. It took... Okay, 22-page comic book issue. Typically, if I'm lucky, I can get about 15 minutes out of that. Yeah. And I'm sure that it took me about 35 minutes to first read through on this. I can see that. Yeah. And and it, it just kind of blows my mind how, you know, I could spend, well, over a minute on every page. Yeah. And then, you know, on the next reading and the next reading, still have more to find in the pages. It's, it, it's, it's really well-detailed and layered writing, this issue. It is. And, you know, it, it's not... It's nice to see a comic that is not afraid of words. Yeah. Because there are an awful well, lot of it, comics... Well, one thing you can say about James Roberts, he's not afraid of words. Yes, but all the words actually mean something. Yes. Which, you know... It, with, with your, well, the first obvious example is Chris Claremont, but also with Simon Furman a lot of times, there are a lot of words and they don't amount to much. <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, we've basically established Furman has his own language. Yes. You know, it's not English, but it's based in it. Yeah. Sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> now, okay, the uh, the flashbacks interspersed with Ultra Magnus talking to Tyrest after he wakes back up. Did you notice on the one monitor screen, Magnus is uh, looking up um, 1984? No, I missed that. The the provision on thought warfare that he had told Tailgate some issues back had basically been uh, uh, rendered pointless because that process never developed to need the uh, law for it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming that the process has now developed... Well, I would say so, because the legislators were claiming 1984 against Skids in their first appearance in issue two. Yeah, because we we get finally at the end of... I, I It's the end of this issue, the first time where we get it very clearly linked up that the numbers the legislators spout off are the sections of the Tyrist Accord that are in violation. Not exactly. When Ultra Magnus was teaching Tailgate the Tyrist Accord um, and the Autobot Code in general... That point came up. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't said outright, but Tailgate asked about uh, section nineteen, subsection eighty, passage four, however it was worded, mm-hmm. because he had heard the legislator ask about it. And Ultra Magnus, when he was giving him the lesson, skipped from nineteen eighty three to nineteen eighty five. Okay. So you know, from that, the reader understands that there's a relation between these codings and what the golden robot was saying it back in issue two. Yeah. Uh, this might be the first time that it's, you know, presented outright that 
the legislator like where they're saying it in continuity that the legislators are claiming the legal codes at their targets. Yeah. And I think we found out that the 17, whatever it is, is the uh, crimes against creation that the entire crew has been charged with. Yeah. Uh, somebody else had pointed out, too, that um, the 17 number was actually 1984 minus the number of crew members on the Lost Light. Oh. Nice touch. Huh. Yeah, well, he seems to have a thing for numbers, too. Yeah. Roberts. So... Uh, we were talking about this in chat before, but I mean, the art is consistent from issue to issue. There's no complaint with that, but I mean, what can you even say about it after 19 issues? Yeah, about, about the only thing you can say is, you know, this is a nice panel. That's a nice panel, you know? Yeah. And there are a couple of really nice examples here, like the uh, one you used in the review of Pharma, who is just about terrifying. Oh, that's it's pretty terrifying. Um, You know, there is an inker assisting on the art this issue. There usually isn't. Mm -hmm. And I really think that his contribution, you know, made panels like that. Yeah. Because, I mean, to my understanding, that's what an inker does. You know, they go over the lines, they add shading where it's appropriate. And the shading on that panel didn't feel like something we would normally have. So I, I want to think that that was done at the inking stage. Sounds right. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean... I think the most time we can appreciate the art being so consistent is after we've had somebody else doing the art. Yeah. Depending who the somebody else is. Mm -hmm. You know, with that Guido issue, I mean, there's a little bit of difference you could see, but not a whole lot to uh, really make you thankful to get back to the regular artist. But that's not always the case. Yeah, definitely true. Uh, issue 20 kind of has a lot to live up to, I think, because just, you know, how much happened and was revealed in this and, you know, how much was fit into one issue. And I'm kind of worried it's going to be a letdown after this. Well, is this part three or four? I, three. I was, this is three. Oh, yeah. So we got so, two more to go. Yeah. So, yeah, if any issue is going to be a letdown, it's probably the next one. You know, mm -hmm. I I hope not, but. You know, if, if there's going to be a lull, it's it's going to be here. But, yeah, I would think so. You know, I'm. The hope, of course, would be that there's still enough information to relate that we can get two more issues out of it, or possibly, as in the situation with Overlord, it will all wind up next issue, and then the, the last issue will be picking up the pieces. Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, we know issue 22 is being treated as kind of like a retrospective on the series presented as um, basically home movies that yeah. Rewind is recorded. So, I mean, I, if anything, I would think that would kind of be the aftermath issue for this, but we'll find out. Yeah. And there's another nice comic convention that isn't uh, used often enough anymore, the recap issue. <laughs> of course, some people might be happy about that. Yeah. But, you know, with uh, James Roberts plotting it out, I, I would say the clip show would actually work. Yeah. You know, there, there are certainly plenty of opportunities to take old events and present them in ways to give you new information. And if I remember correctly, the uh, alternate cover for that one is a Skids. Ah. So that's probably going to be his pack-in comic. That works. So it will probably have a little something to do with skids. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. So I want to tell you about Audible. Uh, I've been a member of Audible.com for, I don't know, four or five years now. Uh, I'm a huge fan of audiobooks and uh, audio you know, entertainment. Obviously, I do this podcast. I've been doing it now for 13 years on and off. It's kind of um, just sort of something that, you know, works for me i'm assuming since you're watching watching or listening to this you're also into you know getting your information through audio means uh and audible.com is just a fantastic way of doing that uh audible has like over a hundred thousand audiobooks uh if if you're like me you really don't have a lot of time to sit down and read audible allows you to you know read while driving while working out, while doing housework, while d walking the dog. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's such a fantastic way of getting information. And uh, Audible 
is the premier source of audiobooks and lectures. Uh, the teaching companies, uh, the great courses are now available on Audible. I've actually already listened to two. It's like it's like a college level course that you can do in your PJs or you can do while driving. It's it's awesome. I love it. Um, and by being a listener of Radio Free Cybertron, you can actually become a member or you get a free trial, a uh, free audio book of your choice. Go to audibletrial.com slash TF Radio. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L dot com slash TF R-E-D-I-O. Audible.com is awesome. I really love it. So again, it's audibletrial.com slash TF Radio. You get a free audio book of your choice. Keep it forever, you know, but if you're like me, I know you're going to become a member. It's just just too great, too easy, too simple. It's, it's just like the way to learn. I love Audible. I really do. You boys a bit bored? Snap me to it! Snap me to a Slim Jim! Hey gang, it's Rob. And this week we got a couple of questions all the way from Facebook. Have you guys heard of that? I think it's going to be a big thing. Uh, first off, from Gabriel Owens. Why does it hurt when I pee? Sounds like you got an inflamed urethra. Or maybe you've drank too much soda and your kidneys are all full of stones. Perhaps see a doctor. You know, maybe. If you feel like, maybe you like it. I don't know. Marcus Good asks, why won't Hasbro just release all the old molds with new posability? Because we live in the real world, and things like that just don't happen. Marcus is trolling me, as was Gabe. I enjoy these these days. Radio Free Cybertron, have you guys heard of that? <laughs> asks, where do baby robots come from, Rob? Well, judging from uh, what I've uh, researched on deviant art, um, psychological trauma. Uh, also, they should see a doctor. Maybe not the same one. Maybe not the same one. But uh, I would advise medical attention. Shit's gonna give me nightmares. I'm never going back to that damn place. Sergio Hi Loco Sefigal, dude, I'm sorry, I can't say your name. I'll just blame it on the fact that I'm from Georgia. Are IGA RGI toys becoming more valuable? Thanks. In short, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, check eBay. Um, it's a good question. I, don't, I really don't know. I really wish I could answer you better, but today's questions are full of insight and wisdom. Let's see. Brandon Hurls asks, my tummy's getting bigger. Am I pregnant? Well, perhaps pregnant with the, from the joy you get from eating Hostess fruit pies. Or perhaps you had a nice tasty Big Mac and large fries. Mm. That's what you had, and you're pregnant. Your your tummy's carrying a bouncing baby bundle of food joy. And I'm pretty sure before you even see this episode, you're gonna give birth to it. And then flush it. Get rid of that thing, man. You don't want it sticking around, man. It's gonna look like a bowl full of Twix bars. It's terrible. It is horrible. The rest of the questions in the queue I'm going to answer next week. Yeah. Because <laughs> they'll actually take a little more one answer. One uh, word answers. Um, but thanks everyone for uh, commenting. And participating. And guys, keep sending me some questions. I got a few more in the queue, but hey, that's like a month's worth of episodes. So keep sending them in. And I will answer them in time. Promise, pinky swears. 
For you guys listening to the audio podcast, I just held my pinky up to the camera. You know, really, I could have just not did it and told them I was, and they wouldn't know any better. They just hear and go, "Oh, he's he's he uh, held his pinky up." So, <clears throat> for uh, the guys watching the video, I'm holding a Lego minifigure up to the webcam. Uh, for you guys listening to the audio podcast, it's a um, reissue Star Saber. Yeah. Because it happened. You missed out. It was a Toys R Us exclusive, and like they sold out in five seconds, and I bought like 50 of them. Just to make you angry. Yeah. So, um, yeah. See you guys next time. And check out my blog at roborobspringer.tumblr.com. And uh, keep sending them questions in. Uh, rob at tfrio.net on our Facebook, on any of our social medias. Um, hell, call our voicemail line. Sometimes the dictation doesn't come off so well. <laughs> but I'll listen to it. and As long as it's not Swahili moon talk or some craziness, I might be able to answer it. Or you could just fart in the phone. I don't know if you're asking me or telling me something when you do that, but hey, what up? So hey, let's send the gang this back to the gang. Right now I think I think uh XV's got a little bass in his voice. That didn't happen. He he doesn't have any bass in his voice. See you next time guys. Bye. You can hear our show on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, or Palm phones. On demand and on the go. Don't have Stitcher? Download it for free today at Stitcher.com or in the app stores. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the... Calling all Autobots and Decepticons. Transformers are coming to Charlotte, North Carolina. Everyone is invited to Shartacon on August 10th through the 11th at the Charlotte Marriott Executive Park Hotel. Come meet voice actors from Generation 1, Beast Wars and Transformers Prime. See the Camaro based on Bumblebee from the movies. Thousands of Transformers will be on display and for sale. Meet the hosts of Radio Free Cybertron, who will be broadcasting from the convention all weekend. Don't forget to check out the RFC panel while you're there. Doors open at 10 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Register online for show exclusives and early access at Shartacon.com. That's C-H-A-R-T-I-C-O-N.com. Or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Transform and roll out. Radio Free Cybertron has teamed up with Kokomo Toys and Collectibles in Kokomo, Indiana. If you're in the Kokomo area, visit our store for a huge selection of new and classic toys. Visit online at www.kokomotoys.com for our address and store hours. While you're there, check out our listing of pre-order items, as well as visit our eBay store. Visit us at www.kokomotoys.com. That's K-O-K-O-M-O-T-O-Y-S.com. We're also on Facebook. So uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and jump to a quick chat about Transformers uh, Prime Beast Hunters final season, final episode. Um, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, if you haven't already watched this, uh, spoilers, uh, you will you'll be spoiled. So I'm literally wanting to take my headset off and go, yeah, and go look for my, my slipstream. <laughs> while these guys talk about that. So, hey, guys, somebody take it away. Don, start with you. Okay. Uh, well, the last episode of Transformers Prime, not counting uh, Predacon Rising, the movie that comes out in October, uh, aired last Friday. And for those of us who have been following Transformers Prime since the inception, it 
was a pretty damn good episode. I, I'd say I this was a very fat, satisfying finale. Yeah, I actually so, like this and think it was handled better than the animated finale. And I uh, love damn it. Yeah, it it didn't feel rushed. Uh, it felt like they were trying to uh, cover as many dangling plot threads as they could. Uh, everyone seemed to get a little moment to shine. Uh, it wasn't one thing I liked about this episode. It, just the Prime and Megatron fight was brutal. It was well done, but it wasn't like Beast Machines in which it was 25 minutes of the entire episode. So I like the fact that other, you see the other characters able to do their things as they're part of the plan, and it's not just Prime and Megatron having another slugfest. And I do fully agree that the emotional impact of everything would have been much better if Hasbro hadn't blown the surprise in their own damn convention. Yeah, that uh, we were talking beforehand on how if they had shown Bumblebee being damaged and then fade to black, we we, we, we would kind of know that he would not be being killed off in the finale being Bumblebee. But the emotional impact was completely gone by the scene, the scene they showed was later past that, so we knew like, oh, he'll be fine. I mean, you know, it just it lost all of this emotional drama. Basically, Bumblebee scene. did not talk yet. So when he was shot by Megatron, while he was trying to get the uh, the the uh, sword to Prime, uh, and he was shot in the air, and he went gray basically you knew that he was going to come back to life because um he didn't talk yet which is the big thing that they were hyping is bumblebee's finally going to talk but i do give it to hasbro or you know the writers or whoever it was for finally allowing bumblebee to talk oh yes i mean they could have just kept up with the whole minicon beat uh and then it would have been another Bay Bumblebee style, and it could have set a precedence for the next Bumblebee not speaking. So it that. almost it it definitely redeemed itself by, you know, as much as we complained about him not talking through the whole series, they mentioned it a couple times that Megatron, you know, ripped out his voice box or you know whatever. Um. And because of that, I think there's a great sense of poetic justice that Bumblebee gets to be the big damn hero of Transformers Prime. Yeah. Yes, I think that that that's what shocked me more about the whole fi- the final five to ten minutes is you know you see Prime hanging off the edge, and Prime doesn't do the final blow. I mean, it's from out of nowhere, Bumblebee comes and takes care of business. And I yes. like how it was set up too because. They didn't show Bumblebee for a good three or four seconds after the sword went through the center of Megatron's oh. chest. And oh, you're kind of thinking, who would who would have grabbed the sword because Smokescreen could have grabbed it or Ratchet could have grabbed it. I was actually kind of thinking maybe Ratchet drank some of the synthetic Energon and because they were all having trouble carrying the sword – I figured maybe Ratchet drank the synthetic Energon, grabbed the sword after Bumblebee dropped it, and stabbed Megatron. So even Bumblebee being the one to stab him kind of did shock me. Yeah. Um, well, it, and then if you, they also shot that scene great because the yell of just the single screaming of Megatron was generic enough that it could have really been any other voice in the cast. Right. right. And it wasn't until that actor calmed down that you could actually recognize it was a distinctly Bumblebee voice. And then that, you know, Bumblebee, as he was, as he had the sword in Megatron, said, you know, you'll never take anything from anyone again. Um, It really, like, vindicated Bumblebee for what Megatron did to him. And just to see Megatron slip off the sword and fall away... And Bumblebee started talking again, and he realized that he heard his own voice not only in his head but in his ears. And he was kind of shocked, and everyone else was like, yeah, we already just heard you talk. When Bumblebee was just saying that in his head, he didn't even realize till the end that he had his voice back. 
And I like the face detail they did with the animation for Bumblebee, giving him like half the battle mask that would fold down to reveal an actual face. Yeah. And uh, it also shows his progress from just being a scout. You know, in terms of power level, him and RC were kind of about the same level uh, as far as maybe just raw power. So it, it, I think the, the the look of shock they put on Megatron's face of who actually stabbed him kind of made that moment too because th- it's just this look on his face like, you are kidding me. Well, Megatron didn't expect it because he had seen Bumblebee f- die and fall into this cyber matter, um, which is, you know, when, when Megatron was fighting... Um, Predaking in the previous episode, Megatron even said, it's not the fact that you're stronger than I am, because you are stronger than I am. It's the fact that I am more cunning. And because Bumblebee was dead, Megatron took him out of the equation, and that's that was his downfall. Uh, leaving that scene and going a little bit earlier in the, in the show, I think a lot of us were wondering, how is, how, how is Soundwave going to be handled after him speaking the last uh, last episode before last, and when the wreckers are trying to storm the bridge, and Soundwave pulls the old, oh look here, have a space bridge, and drops him in the holding cell. You're wondering, you're wondering what's going to happen next. And I've always been a big proponent of the kids in this show. I think I think these kids are some of the best human characters we've seen in Transformers, and maybe from other properties as well. They're not, they don't, they don't drive the story. They're part of the story. And they show that you can have good human characters without being plot devices just to be captured every week. And so they idea- learned from their experiences before all this and sent shockwave to the shadow realm. Or soundwave. Yeah, soundwave. So basically they cross the streams and they wound up. And one, and one of the greatest scenes is, when Soundwave, after the explosion, he tries to punch Miko, who's wearing the Apex armor, and he goes right through her, and he looks at his hand, and it's just that moment of like, what the hell? And the next scene, when, she, when Miko says, enjoy the Shadow Zone, dude, as they're running off, you see behind them, and there's nothing there. So they so trapping, you know, trapping uh, Soundwave in the Shadow Zone was a really interesting idea from came out of nowhere from first season. And then at the end of the episode, after they kill Megatron, he falls off the sword down into the, you know, I guess space. Um, It's possible he burned up in the atmosphere. It's also possible that they could be setting up something for Predacons rising, which we still probably should not say anything about in case anyone is still trying to avoid the leaked spoilers from the DVD case. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, so now what Megatron was trying to do was to rebuild this cyber matter, you know, get the cyber matter working so he could uh, restore Cybertron. But n- that was also the Autobots' objective. So now that <laughs> Megatron's out of the way, uh, they continue to Cybertron and basically beam that cyber matter, which healed Bumblebee, directly into the core of uh, Cybertron, which is Primus. And that restores Cybertron. And they uh, land the ship. And then Predaking flies away because he was hanging on to, I guess, the back of the ship. Which sets up the Predacon Rising DVD that we're going to get. Yeah. Awesome. And I think... Yeah, and I, th- I think one of the big surprises of the series was Ratchet offering to stay behind on Earth, and that that caught me off guard. Because now, is that guilt for his? Does he feel guilty that he gave Megatron the the, the balanced synthian formula? Is that guilt over if he if he had picked up Jack and Miko and Raph when they called in, uh, uh, you know, before Megatron captured them and took them to Cybertron? As bait, as, as hostages, did he feel guilty for that? And I thought that was there a could really be an element of that. Yeah. So, I don't think he felt guilty. I think, like he said at the end, you know, this is where I'm needed, and 
he really did care for the humans. He's like that grumpy old man that doesn't want to admit that he actually likes anybody. So, and that, that was Ratchet. That and, cliche. Yeah, I'm sorry. it was that. It was that cliche, and it. it because even when Megatron said, you know, he was going to hurt the kids in that that episode or the previous episode, you know, you could tell it bothered him, but he didn't want to say it bothered him. That's XV. Believe it or not. Hopefully Ratchet won't inflate one of the uh, barracks full of balloons and fly off on an adventure. Now, one of the big unanswered questions from this is what happens to Knockout? <laughs> Knockout yeah, well, gets punched by Miko in the armor. Yeah, yeah, but does that just take him out for good? I know the Apex armor is tough, but it can't be no. that tough. No. Is that just like a here? I'm evening the scale thing, like Hulk and Thor in the Avengers. I think they would let him join. Of all the Decepticons, I could see him as an Autobot. You know, yeah, they need a doctor now if Ratchet's staying behind on Earth. That's true. That too, and he was smart. You know, he was smart. He liked uh, he. He's a car mode. <laughs> he liked uh, he liked his paint job. Uh, he wasn't necessarily super evil. Uh, he was just kind of going with the flow of things. And also, we can't forget the two buddy the buddy the buddy comedy brewing with uh, Shockwave and uh, Starscream. You know, the 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 odd couple of the group wind up in the same escape pod flying towards Cybertron and sort of flying over the horizon. So they're all they're also an unknown element out there as well. Yes. Well at least this time Starscream's not just ahead. Good. <laughs> awesome. So if you if you if you've not seen Transformers Prime the final episode or you you didn't care for the series, at least give the final episode a look and they they put a lot of work into trying to wrap everything up so I think could, everyone can could you watch the final episode without uh, without the context of the rest of the season three and it makes sense? Yeah, I that think might you could. Be a little bit tough. Yeah. I or, think you could. But yeah. seriously, even if you weren't a huge fan of Transformers Prime at first, that's okay. It even picked up. It, it picked up. It picked up. I, 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 but I it liked, really found itself when it came to Beast Sunders. I left. They got all the filler crap. They got a good pace going. They got good characters rolling again, and it was pretty damned excellent. That's and awesome. here's another thing I'll give to the writers. The fact that they kept uh, Starscream loyal to Megatron to the end was, I thought, a really good move and something that I liked seeing. And something very different for both. Yes. You know, because it's like, you you, kind of, during the whole last half of the season, you keep expecting Starscream to turn back to, Megatron has stubbed his toe. I'm the leader now. And... He doesn't do that. He actually tries his best to be the best second lieutenant Megatron's got. And that was a, a, a refreshing change of pace from the traditional Star Screams that we do get. And they, they teetered on that border where they... In the tailpipe. Yeah. Was that, they, was that foul? They teetered on that border. The ending is a pain in the tail. They teetered on that border the whole season that, you know, there they made us think that there was a chance that Starscream was going to be like, ah, Megatron's dead. Who cares? I'm in charge. And he just never did. Cool. I I, I plan on checking it out. I kind of sort of have to. Yeah. So I I, I have uh, most of this coming weekend open. I think I'll probably sit down and catch up on what I missed. I mean, I really hope they release, you know, a whole box set of this Transformers Prime. Uh, I'm hoping we get some kind of... Beast Hunters doesn't have its own release date for DVD or anything yet, just Predacons Rising. Right. I would hope the season would be out close to the same time. So is Predacon Rising going to air on TV, or is it only going to be on DVD? All all I've heard is... yeah, I hope they air it, but all I've heard is the Blu-ray and DVD release is the week of October 8th, is all that I've heard. Oh, Depending on how long that. it is, they should probably break it up into multiple extra episodes. Yeah. But you would think they would have put a trailer at the end of this episode of Prime to tell people to expect it. Well, they did with Predaking flying away. No, I mean, 
an actual like oh, okay. episode, you know, because he at no point at nothing that with me watching the hub with through other methods, I don't see all the commercials. But there was nothing like join us for the series finale of Prime. There was nothing mentioned about this being the final episode of the state of the series I that I ever there saw. Was. Well, I, I mean, thought again, there was. Th- there may have been. I just and I didn't see it, but. You know, if I would think that if they've invested the money in making the DVD, they would have put something at the end of this episode to say, "Look for this in this." Cool. They they were advertising this as the final episode, though. So that's just something I didn't catch. Then. Cool. Anything else? Just watch it. Watch yeah. it and enjoy. It, it's worth it. It's not one of those things where we say watching it, watch it because you're a Transformers fan, or watch it because you know Bumblebee gets his voice back. It's really the la- the last couple episodes have been well written. Watch it because it's actually fun. And and so fun. It's, it's like more than meets the eye. Yes. I think I can handle that. Let's do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Promise. Okay, anything else? No. I think that's pretty much it this time. Anything awesome go on the chat go on going on in the chat this week? Just some thing begging you not to discuss Prime. I wonder why. How many I guess I I'm curious how many people out there actually haven't watched it yet. That also watched this. Probably very few. Yeah. How many people actually have the hub? Probably fewer. <laughs> See, that's... But how many people have BitTorrent? Yeah, uh, I would say YouTube would probably be the most popular. That just shows you where I'm at. Like, how many people? How many people have Napster? <laughs> yeah. Anybody out there with I'm... Audio Galaxy? Well, I'm just wondering if the hub has any con- if Hasbro has any control in negotiating with the cable companies on getting the hub on these lower tier networks to get more exposure. Yeah, they have they they can negotiate that. They have money. You have to they have to pay for that. Okay. I I, I wasn't sure how it all works. Just- H- higher like like um higher tier cable, I mean higher end cable channels get paid. Lower tier cable channels have to pay to be carried. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, if if I wanted the hub, I would have to go two levels above what I had just to get the hub, and the only thing else on that uh, level tier was all the Discovery spinoffs, and that was it. And I'd have to jump up to about a $95 a month package. You know how much I pay a month in cable? Hmm. 250 bucks. Yeah, I need to get that fixed. See, I, I, I scaled back because with my work schedule and everything, there's just not much I'm watching. I watch Dexter, and I will watch Breaking Bad when it comes out. Comes back. That's it. I need. I need to. I need to cut the cord. I, I seriously am. I'm going to I think the thing. last thing I watched was an, was Sunday morning. One Sunday I had off. I watched Sunday morning. That was three months ago. CBS Sunday morning. Yeah. Like the old I, Charles Curalt show when he was alive. Yeah, Charles Osgood does it now. It's just for some reason. I, if I'm off on a Sunday, I'll watch that because does, it's nice. It's good news. Does it still have that classical piece as the intro? No, actually, well, they, they it does, but they changed it. Uh, um, went Marsalis, uh, Quentin Marsalis. Yeah, he does a trumpet version of that now. Oh, cool! That's awesome. I I love that tune. I can never remember what it's called. I just know it's the CBS it, Sunday Morning I, theme. I think it's called Sunday Morning. I think that's the actual title of the piece. That's cool. Hey, yeah, go figure. Amazing. Okay, so um, Sharktacon. Next week, uh, it is August 9th, 10th, and the 11th. If you want to go in as a walk-in, it's going to be the 10th and the 11th. If you haven't already pre-registered, I don't think you can do much of anything uh, on the 9th, but I may get my hand slapped for saying that. If you want to go for sure, go to sharktacon.com. That's Actually, it's it's shartacon.com, but it's not that kind of sharding. It's like Charlotte, North Carolina. C H A R T I C O N dot com. Most of us will be there. I have a live show on Saturday. We'll be streaming the convention. Um, we can. We'll be streaming the convention uh, like constantly, and we'll also have a live panel. 
whether or not I actually uh, stream that panel is um, up for debate, but uh, we'll definitely be using that and posting that as a show at some point later. It'll be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and JD has his headphones back on. Yay. Yeah, I, I actually listened to it, so I'm totally spoiled. Oh, did you? Yeah, I can't believe that they, that Emirate Zeron, like, you know, was there and mm, just yes. saved the day. I, I can see where you'd be shocked by that. And then Smokescreen turns out to be Primus's avatar. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that was just out of the blue. I mean, no oh, yeah. And yeah. Tux- well, I was shocked they threw an Overlord at the last in the last yeah. episode. And Tuxedo totally. Mask was badass in this too. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah see, see, Jack got hit on the head and thought he was an anime character. He went Super yes. Saiyan Four. Tuxedo <laughs> Mask did. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. who would have thought Nico was the key to the All Spark? Oh, well. I know, I know. You know that would have been believable considering you know things that happen in animated, but. Um. So, but that's uh, pretty much it. So, uh, if you are going to be in the Charlotte, North Carolina area next weekend, we very much hope to see you. Um, Shark is going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait to see uh, Don and Diecast there. Yes. I eat my headphones. <laughs> yeah. Bad Massey. Bad that's Massey. A bad kitty. <laughs> So if uh, I guess he wants we're, my headphones. we're going to have a live Google Plus Hangout following the show, right, Diecast? Yes. Awesome. For the guys, I'm Brian Kilby. We will be back next week. See you then. Later. Everyone take care.